Hello everyone! While we may analyze single parts in most practical engineering applications, typically we have an assembly of parts of different sizes made from different materials, all interacting with each other. Contact conditions allows us to define whether parts are bonded together, if they can slide relative to each other or if they can separate from each other. In short, without contact, we cannot model realistic interactions between parts, so understanding the basics of contact is important in our journey to model physical systems more accurately. In this video, we will focus our attention on setting up models with contact for linear or small deflection analysis, providing the foundation for our understanding of realistically representing parts interactions. So, let's get started. Let's first see a simple example of two bar elements that are in the first case connected and sharing common node, and in the second case are separated. The bar elements A and B have nodes I, J, and K. They are sharing the node J. Notice that KJJ stiffness term in the stiffness matrix is 2K, where there is contribution of stiffness from elements A and B at the node J. For a bar, the stiffness K equals A times E over L. Also notice that specifying a value of UJ affects all three force terms. On the other hand, if the bar elements A and B are not sharing a common node, then the corresponding nodes for element A are I and J, and for element B are K and L. The matrix has no coupling of stiffness terms KJJ and KKK, as we saw in the shared node case where we had 2K. If we write out the equation such as FJ equals minus K times UI plus K times UJ, there is no UK term, so a dis displacement at node K will not induce an internal force at node J. Hence, the elements are decoupled. By sharing a common node or adding a contact element between them would establish a stiffness relationship between the two nodes, J and K. In general, adding contact elements between parts of the assembly will not allow bodies or surfaces to interpenetrate. Moreover, compressive normal forces, as well as tangential frictional forces, may be transferred between the parts in contact. There are different types of contact available in ANSYS Mechanical, as is illustrated in this table. Because contacting bodies do not interpenetrate, the relationship between the two surfaces is established to prevent them from passing through each other in the analysis. When interpenetration is prevented, it is said that contact compatibility is enforced. In order to enforce compatibility at the contact interface, several different contact formulations are available. These formulations define the solution method used. The options for formulation property are pure penalty, augmented Lagrange, normal Lagrange, multipoint constraint or MPC, and beam formulations. In this video, we will focus on augmented Lagrange and MPC formulation. You can think of augmented Lagrange formulation as having a stiff spring between contacting parts that cause them to interact. The higher the stiffness of the spring, the lower the penetration between the parts. With this method, there is an additional check on penetration, and the formulation is augmented to enable this. If you go back to the simplified example of two bar elements that are initially separated, we could connect them with contact elements. Based on the augmented Lagrange formulation, the stiff spring will connect nodes J and K, establishing the contact between them. 
Multipoint constraint or MPC formulation can also be used when establishing connection between nodes J and K in the simple example of two bar elements with one degree of freedom per node. This formulation is used for bounded and no separation types of contact, and it adds constraint equation to directly tie the displacements between contacting nodes, in this case nodes J and K. It is a direct, efficient way of relating nodes in the contact region. In this example, the MPC can be thought of as putting in an equation uj equals uk that reduces to a similar case of joint nodes, which is why this method is limited to bounded and no separation types of contact. Just keep in mind that we are showing a very simple case here of MPC contact formulation is not as simple as uj equals uk, since the mesh is usually not matching between the connecting parts. The default of augmented Lagrange formulation is sufficient for stress analysis of 3D solids, but if you would like to create contact between surface bodies or line bodies, MPC formulation may be more appropriate. This is related to the need to properly connect rotational degrees of freedom between the parts. The default connections in ANSYS mechanical application are found between parts that have face in proximity, as well as their surface normal oriented toward each other, both with adjustable tolerances. This is a very efficient way of detecting and creating connections if you think about large assemblies with hundreds of mating surfaces. Sometimes there may be a gap between the parts that should be connected and contact may not be automatically detected. However, by changing the contact detection tolerance value, automatic contact can be regenerated. On the other hand, auto contact detection may identify connections between faces that should not be in physical contact. Some examples would include automatically detecting and creating bounded contact between a bolt hole and a bolt shaft or including fillet surfaces in the contact pair, as will be illustrated in our walkthrough example. Though the automatic contact detection can be disabled if it is not desired, it is a useful tool if you have an assembly with many parts and connections that would otherwise need to be created manually. However, it's always a good practice to check automatically created connection and edit them if necessary. In some situations, results of contact pressure and stress at the contact location are of interest and we may wish to prescribe a uniform, finer mesh in the contact region. In that case, contact sizing under mesh can be used to create elements of relatively similar size for face-to-face -face or face-to-edge contact. To examine contact conditions on an assembly before and after solution, the contact tool can be used. The contact tool is an object you can insert under connections object for checking initial contact conditions, such as the contact status gap penetration to ensure that everything is set up correctly before you invest time in a solution. It can also be added under solution object for reviewing contact results after the simulation completes, such as contact status, contact pressure, frictional stress, sliding, or gap. In addition, a force reaction probe scope to a contact pair can provide useful information about contact forces transmitted between parts. Let's now get into ANSYS mechanical to have a closer look using a simulation model of a case and a lid. Usually the case may have many parts inside and have a more complicated analysis, but we are using a simple case to illustrate the contact detection feature and the potential pitfall and blindly using the feature without inspection. Our geometry consists of a quasi-symmetry model of a case and a lid that are exposed to uniform temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. The lid is bounded to the case. The loading and geometry are a trivial case of free thermal expansion where we expect zero stress to develop in the model. Let's get started. Drag and drop a static structural system on the project page. Right click on geometry cell, import geometry, browse and pick the file name case with lid. 
Double click on the model cell to open ANSYS Mechanical. Set the units to the millimeter kilogram newton second for this simulation. If we expand the geometry, we can see the material for both the case and the lid is structural steel. We will leave it as is. Now expand the connections branch and the contact branch. Click on contact region. We have just one contact in the model, which is the contact between the lid and the case. This contact was automatically created when the model was brought into ANSYS Mechanical. So how does Mechanical determine what contact should be generated? The contact branch has setting under the auto detection section. Essentially, the algorithm uses the settings such as distance tolerance, the angle tolerance as well as a few other options to determine if faces or edges should have contact definition between them. Sometimes the tolerance needs to be adjusted to automatically capture the proper contact. Issues with CAD models such as gaps and overlaps, as well as the scale of the feature compared to the overall model dimension may come into play. Now notice we have three viewports with the contact and the target windows appearing to the facilitate highlighting the contact and the target regions. Click on sync view in the ribbon so all three windows will synchronize the display orientation. Now as we rotate the model we can see faces that represent the contact side are highlighted in red and faces that represent the target side are highlighted in blue. Notice how the fillets of the lid are included in the contact. Keep this in mind as we will come back to this shortly. Recall from our lecture that in the simplest sense, the contact establishes a stiffness relationship between parts and ties to prevent the penetration of the contact surface through the target surface. Also notice that the entire underside of the lid is colored blue, which means the target elements can potentially be overlaid on the entire surface. Contact and target surfaces do not need to match one for one, so different sizes, faces, or surfaces, as well as non-matching nodes are perfectly acceptable. To get a better view of the interface, the exploded view can be used. So click on the display tab and drag the explode slider to the right. Now we have a clearer view of the interface. Pick reset to return to the unexploded view. Also notice that the contact type defaulted to bounded behavior. Recall this means there will be no separation and no sliding between the parts. Let's generate the mesh. So right click on mesh and pick generate mesh. Now we will specify the symmetry boundary condition since we have just a quarter of our case with the lid modeled. Right click on the model, insert symmetry. Pick the face selection filter. Pick the cut faces on the ZX plane using the control key to select the two faces as shown. Right click on symmetry, insert symmetry region. Now for the symmetry normal, we need to be sure we have the normal to the symmetry plane properly specified, otherwise the symmetry will not be properly defined. We see that in the global coordinate system, that defaults the y-axis points normal to our xz symmetry plane, so change the symmetry normal to y-axis. Repeat these steps for the cut faces on yz plane. And in this case, the x-axis can be specified for the symmetry normal since it aligns with the global x-axis. To prevent rigid body motion of the case in the z-direction, we constrain one vertex of the bottom of the case. Pick the vertex selection filter, pick a vertex on the bottom of the case, insert displacement, and set 
the z component to zero. Now let's assign a uniform temperature to the case and lid. Pick the body selection filter, then pick the case and control select the lid. Right mouse click insert thermal condition. Specify 200 degrees Celsius for the magnitude. The initial temperature is set on the environment branch. So click on static structural and note the environment temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. The thermal strain of the case and the lid will be the applied temperature minus the environment temperature multiplied by coefficient of thermal expansion of the material. Since we wish to see the contact forces between case and the lid, we turn on the output controls for nodal forces. Go to analysis settings, output controls and change nodal forces to yes. Let's solve the model. Let's check the stress in the assembly. Right click on solution, insert stress, equivalent stress, right click and evaluate all the results. The legend shows a non-zero stress in the case, but the stress should be zero or near zero. Drag and drop the contact to the solution and the contact reaction force results is inserted in the tree. Right click, evaluate all results. Notice a non-zero reaction force which should also be equal to zero or near zero. Let's inspect the contact results. So right click on solution, insert contact tool. Note that contact tool can be useful to determine the contact status, pressure, or other contact related contour plots. Right click, insert, and we see a listing of available contact results. We will leave just the status for contact tool. Right click, evaluate all results. Notice how the contact shows sticking, which confirms that parts are bonded. So why do we see the stress developing between the parts? Recall how the contact definition included the fillets of the lid. As the parts thermally expand, the fillets want to move away from the flat surface, but they are prevented from doing so due to bonded condition. These fillets should not be part of the contact definition. So this takes us to a very important lesson. Contacts that are automatically created must be checked. While the mechanical tool conveniently creates contact, there are cases where they may not be properly defined and we need to make modifications. In this case, we wish to remove the fillets from the contact definition because they should not be bounded to the flat top of the case. Keep in mind that if the lid was meant to slide on the case surface, then including the fillets would be appropriate. But in the case of bonding them together, it does not make physical sense to have the fillets bonded to the case surface. Let's correct the contact situation in the duplicated system. So we could go back to our original model if later desired. Return to workbench project schematic, click on the down arrow and pick duplicate. Double click on the model in the newly duplicated system to open ANSYS Mechanical. Click on the contact definition. Notice the target definition has three faces. Let's now remove the fillets from this definition. Click on the target definition, rotate the model is needed, and control click the first fillet face. The color changes from green, showing it's no longer selected. Repeat using control click on the remaining fillet, and then pick apply. The target definition should now have only one face as shown. The remaining setup does not need to be changed. Right click on the solution and pick solve. This will also update the mesh before the solution begins. 
Pick on the equivalent stress result in the solution and notice how the stress results are extremely small, essentially zero, as expected. Pick on the force reaction for the contact pair and also notice how the reaction force is essentially zero, as expected. This example illustrates how it is always a good practice to check the automatically generated connections, such as contacts, and correct them if necessary. Just a final point on contact auto detection. When the geometry is refreshed, such as following a change to the upstream CAD geometry, mechanical automatically generates connections. This can be disabled if desired by going to the connections branch and setting generate automatic connections on refresh to no. Okay, so let's summarize. Different types of contact and contact formulations are available in ANSYS Mechanical. By default, contact is detected based on the proximity and orientation of the faces. The auto contact detection feature helps us to be more efficient, but it may detect connections in the areas of the model where contact is not applicable. Always check automatically created connections. The contact tool can be used for initial contact solution and post-processing contact results. A force reaction probe can be scoped to the contact region and provide the force reaction in a contact region. I hope you have found this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources. Thank you.